Hey guys, this is Dodoid. So today we're going to be continuing our History of Silicon Graphics series. This is part 6 now. So we're going to be starting in 2000 and going up until late 2001. There were a whole lot of MIPS product refreshes and a new Itanium system finally came out. So uh, let's get right into that. Returning to our story in mid-2000, SGI's MIPS product lines are largely identical to those of 1997, though some systems had gotten faster R10,000s or the new R12,000, a somewhat improved version of effectively the same processor, no new MIPS products had been introduced. While the early 2000s would see many MIPS products replaced, SGI chose to start, oddly, with the only one-year-old Visual Workstation. As discussed last episode, the Visual Workstation product line consisted of the Visual Workstation 320 and the Visual Workstation 540. While both of these products ran Microsoft Windows on an Intel x86 processor, they were architecturally far closer to SGI's MIPS-based O2, and had many O2-like elements such as high-performance graphics built into the motherboard, analog video I.O., and ARC's boot firmware. Somewhere. This changed on May 15, 2000 with the release of the Visual Workstation 230, 330, and 550. Though these systems were the first Visual Workstations to come with Linux as a factory option, as the SGI 1000 series servers did, they lost the abnormal features in favor of standard PC hardware such as an Acer M23D motherboard and NVIDIA GeForce and Quadro graphics cards, which SGI rebranded as the VPro V3, VR3, V7, and VR7. The next big announcement from SGI was the Octane 2, released in June 2000. Unlike the Indigo 2, however, the Octane 2 was in effect an upgraded but similar version of its predecessor. Though the Octane 2 was marketed as featuring faster processors, an upgraded front plane system board and power supply, and VPro V6 and V8 graphics boards, all of these upgrades could and in many cases already had been performed on the original Octane. Still, the Octane 2 was a capable machine, and while it is seemingly not as common as the original Octane, it appears to have been a commercial success. The next product refresh came just a few months later in July 2000, this time for the Origin 2000 and Onyx 2. These replacements were the Origin 3000 and its graphics-capable version the Onyx 3000. Both were MIPS-powered supercomputers composed of rack-mount bricks connected via NumaLink. This modular architecture, codenamed SN1 and later SN MIPS, allowed for even more modularity and expandability than the Origin 2000's S2MP. Bricks could contain disks, infinite reality graphics pipes, CPUs, XIO or PCI expansion slots, and other system components across one or more racks. While its first use was in large supercomputers, SN1 was far more versatile than simply rack-sized supercomputing systems, as SGI customers would soon discover. Returning to non-MIPS products, SGI was about to release yet another Intel-based product line. Though SGI already had the Visual Workstation, Intergraph ZX10, and SGI 1000 series x86 products, as well as their MIPS offerings, on May 29, 2001, SGI released the Silicon Graphics 750, their first Itanium product. The 750 was manufactured by Intel as a reference Itanium design, and was also sold as the Dell Precision Workstation 730, IBM IntelliStation Z Type 6894, HP i2000, and Fujitsu Siemens Celsius 800. Though a 2003 Register article claims that 55 systems were sold in total, this is called into question by a 2001 Ohio Supercomputer Center press release detailing a 146 processor cluster, meaning that at least 73 systems were used. It can, however, be concluded that the system was a failure, as SGI quietly pulled it from the market only six months into its lifespan, and very few are still known to exist today. It's worth noting that in August of 2001, SGI reintroduced the O2 as the O2+. Plus. Though the color was changed and lower-end CPU configurations were eliminated in favor of the faster R7000, the O2 Plus is essentially the same computer as the original O2. With the Octane 2, O2 Plus, Onyx 3000, and Origin 3000 all released, the only SGI product still in need of an upgrade was the Origin 200. That changed in October of 2001 with the release of the Origin 300. The Origin 300 was effectively an Origin 3000 system condensed into a 2U server. This meant that while an Origin 3000 C brick was useless without at least an I or IX brick, an Origin 300 could operate on its own as a fully functional server, with NumaLink only being needed for expansion. 
Positioned as a lower-end system, the Origin 300 was less expandable than the Origin 3000, supporting up to 32 CPUs if 8 units were numalink, as opposed to the Origin 3000's 1024 CPU maximum. So, as of late 2001, SGI is making reasonably good x86 systems and reasonably good MIPS systems, as well as a completely failed Itanium system that they've taken off the market by then. Anyway, if you did enjoy the video, then please do subscribe, it's still a very, very small channel and it will help us grow. And until next time, bye.